Hare Krishna, welcome to our study of the Bhagavad Gita. We are more than halfway through the Gita now. We are in the 11th chapter and today we will discuss the topic of the universal form and <clears throat> discuss three questions. What is the universal form? And is it real? And then what, the Gita describes a form which is very scary. So why is that? This is Arjuna's first verse uh, when he is viewing the universal form. So, what does he what does he describe as seeing? Arjuna vacha pashami devam stava deva dehe sarvam satha bhuta vishesh sanghan brahmana misham kamala sanastham rishims cha sarvan uragam cha divyan. So Arjuna is describing here Pashami Devams. I am seeing all the celestial beings, the gods, Tavadeva Dehe in your body. So the second Deva refers to the Supreme God Krishna. In your form, Dehe, I am seeing all the all the gods. Sarvam Satha Bhuta Vishesh Sanghan. And not only all the gods, I am seeing all the living beings across the universe. Brahmanamisham Kamala Sanastham. And he's seeing the VIPs in the universe. One of the VIPs is Brahmaji. So Brahmanamisham. So Isham refers to Lord Shiva. Brahmaji is, of course, the creator of the universe. Kamala Sanastham. So Kamala Sana is the seat of a lotus. He's seated on that. Rushim's Chasarvan. Uragam's Chadivyan. Rushim's Chasarvan, that I'm seeing the great sages also. And then Uragams, Uragams is the serpents, Divyan. So these are not ordinary, divine serpents. So this, those within the cosmic vision are existing at the bottom of the universe. So Brahma exists at the top of the universe uh, and uh, the serpents exist at the bottom. So basically through this one verse, he's telling that he's seeing everything in the universe. So in a sense, the universal form gives Arjuna a glimpse of omniscience. Uh, it's not entirely omniscience because the, there is more than the universe in existence. There are many universes, but we could say we could say universal omniscience. He can see everything in the universe, and this is an extraordinary vision. So let's look at what is going on in this chapter. Now we will discuss what is the universal form. If you remember the 10th chapter which we discussed previously, in that Arjuna was asking the question, how can I remember you by looking at the manifestations in this world? So the 10th chapter describes specific manifestations within the universe, which can remind us of Krishna. And now the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita talks about how the universe itself can be seen as the form of Krishna, like the body of God. So how does this relate to God consciousness? Ultimately, the Bhagavad Gita is a tool for spiritualizing our consciousness, for raising our consciousness towards the ultimate spiritual reality. So there is one principle we need to understand that the Bhagavad Gita will explain that all knowledge comes from God. Many scientists or any creative people, when they get inspiration, that inspiration is coming from a divine source. So philosophically, knowledge comes from God. Practically, knowledge begins from the world. That means it is not that one day suddenly a person wakes up and decides, I want to know about God. Well, there's something in the world that they see that they want to know about and gradually as they look at the stars maybe in the sky and they see how vast the sky is, how beautiful it is, where did it all come from? And then the thoughts go toward God. So the normal way uh, for most people to think about God is they start with the world. The same approach is used in the universal form. We observe the universe around it and then when we appreciate the universe magnificence and beauty Magnificence is greatness, it's, it's awesomeness, then that can lead us to appreciate God. So for example, at one level, the universal form is a 
we could say it's a tool for enhancing our god consciousness so we can look at the greatness of things in the universe the mountains the oceans the night sky all these they point our mind to realities greater than what we encounter in our daily lives so basically if you consider even how science started science started as natural philosophy and many of the post renaissance renaissance and post renaissance scientists whether it's galileo or newton they observed nature and there they saw the artist they saw the artistry the uh, cyclicity the symmetry within nature and then that made, not only made them develop scientific discoveries but they also made inspired them to uh, see this as the handiwork of god newton famously said that that he saw his scientific discoveries as spiritual insights into how god had fashioned the universe so he said that i i think thy thoughts after thee so we look at the universe magnificence and that points our thoughts towards god similarly we might look at the universe beauty right not just the vastness but also the beauty the artistry of the flowers the sweetness of the bird songs the scenic beauty of nature they can point our reality point our mind to our realities with higher beauty is there some enduring beauty in the world so basically these are ways in which the universe in general can point us toward god and the universal form is we could say a more systematized tool for contemplating on on god using the universe as a take off point for contemplation now the universal form is basically it can be categorized in two ways what the bhagavad gita gives is a revelation and this universal form described in the bhagavatam also that is a conceptualization what is the difference between a revelation revel and conceptualization basically revelation means that it is descending arjuna requests krishna please show me your form मन्यसेति तच्छक्यं मया दृष्टुमिते प्रभो योगेश्वर ततो मे त्वां दर्शयात्मा नमवयम इन 114 ही सेस इफ यू थिंक ओ लॉर्ड आई एम क्वालिफाइड देन प्लीज रिवील दिस यूनिवर्सल फॉर्म टू मी सो इट इज डिसेंडिंग सो इफ दिस इज द ह्यूमन लेवल दिस इज द डिवाइन लेवल देन द यूनिवर्सल फॉर्म एज डिस्क्राइब्ड इन द भगवत गीता इज अ रेवोल्यूशन फ्रॉम द डिवाइन टू द ह्यूमन लेवल इट्स डिसेंडिंग एंड it is revealed by by the lord by god uh, to different people at different times and so for example it is re- being revealed here to arjuna previously it was revealed to yashoda when krishna was still a child and she saw the whole universe in krishna's mouth then it is also later going to be revealed to a sage uttanka muni so he sees it after the whole mahabharat war is over and uh, we will also talk about how it is shown to duryodhana but in, in all these cases it's a revelation that means the lord desires to show and then he shows that's then another idea, way of looking at the universal form is as a conceptualization conceptualization means it is ascending if you consider ascending means what that the, you, this is the human level this is the divine level and the soul who is a spiritual seeker at the human level wants to raise one's consciousness towards the divine so then the yogis visualize various parts of the universe as limbs of the universal body so of the universal body of god so the idea here is that it's a visualization okay let's consider the so maybe say the the mountains so the the mountains are like the bones of the lord or the rivers the ocean is like the water in his navel the trees are like the hair on his body and at a bigger level the within the universe various parts of the universe are different limbs of his body so this is a because it's a conceptualization different seekers might conceptualize it in different ways the important point is to again use the universe as a take off point to meditate on the lord so now that raises the question is this real now what do we mean actually by real 
Okay. So the universal form, is it real or imaginary? See, with, with respect to the universal form, as it is just conceptualized in the Bhagavatam, it is imaginary. In the sense that it is a product of imagination based on scriptural understanding. The universal form is not an inner, eternal form existing existing in on some planet. It there is no that there are within the universe there is much complexity, but there is no place in the universe which is the one place where the universal form exists because the universe itself is the form. So it's an imagination when, it, when we're talking about the conceptualization. With the revelation, it's real because it's Krishna who is revealing it. But there are different ways in which we could define the word real also. So if somebody says real in the sense that it is experienced, yes, it is real. But are we saying real in the sense that it is eternal? Well, then in the sense that it's not eternal. So our lived experience right now is real. Our lived experience, even while dreaming, is real because we are experiencing it. But then when we wake up, it has no reality at all afterward. So the word reality itself is not as simple as we think about, as we often think. So it's the universal form as a conceptualization is imaginary, but it is real in the sense that it takes us to the ultimate reality. So it is the universal form as a conceptualization is a tool and universal form as a revelation is definitely a, a blessing from the Lord. As the Bhagavad Gita will repeatedly say, it is very rare. It's not easy to see this form. Very few people have seen it. And in fact, some features of the universal form which are revealed to Arjuna that no one has seen. So now, if you look, go forward to the Gita's universal form. So I, what I talked till now about imagination was primarily about the Bhagavatam's universal form. Now, why did Arjuna want to see the universal form? Because it was, he wanted a visual demonstration of verbal exposition. And why did he want this? For the world's edification. So that people would be convinced. So Krishna has told in the concluding verse of the 10th chapter, Athava bahu naitena kim gyatena tava Arjuna just by a fragment of me, I pervade the whole universe. So how is that possible? Can, can you show that to me? This theme of God being present in the universe is, is, is universal itself. The Bhagavatam also has the verse Athavishvesha Vishwatman Vishwamurte Svakeshume so, Atha Vishvesh. Vishvesh means you are the Lord of the universe. Atha Vishvesh, Vishwatman. You are the soul of the universe. And then not only that, Vishwamurte. You are the form of the universe. So, there are three things. You exist as the Lord of the universe, outside it or beyond it. Then you exist within the universe as, as its soul. And then you are the universe because it's your body. Vishwamurte. So last time I talked about immanence and transcendence, that God exists within nature or God manifests in nature, that's immanence. God manifests beyond nature, that is transcendence. Today I would like to introduce one more term, in fact, two more terms here. So here it is, a, it is called the theophany. So some of you may have heard of the word epiphany, which is something like inspiration. I got an epiphany. That means I just, I, I got this striking thought, I got this understanding, I got this realization. So when a moment of epiphany is, it's a sudden moment of illumination, clarity, and deepened understanding. So it's like an inspiration. So epiphany, it refers to a deeper understanding of anything, or a deeper revelation, or deeper manifestation, a deeper comprehension of something. A theophany means that it is a manifestation of the divine. Theo is the adjective for God. Uh, so, or the here, not the adjective, it's a prefix which usually refers to God. So, theology, theodicy we have. Theodicy is the, uh, how, how do we reconcile a good God with the, with the evil that we see in the world? So, theophany is the 
manifestation of God within this world. So the, what the, what the Bhagavad Gita is displaying, it's an awesome theophany. Because what does Arjuna see? Arjuna sees the universal form ex- pervading everywhere. And he says many, many hands, many, many arms, many, many legs, many, many bellies, many, many faces. It's pervade is everywhere. So the techn- so I was talking about theophany as one word. So pantheism is that everything is God. And everything is God. Panentheism is something more. That it is, that God is everything, that God is in nature, but God exists beyond nature also. So the Bhagavatam, the, Bhag- so the Bhagavad Gita, sorry, here is describing how Krishna is revealing the universal form. So in that sense, the universe is there and Krishna is there. So it's a it's an example of panentheism. More than God is nature and God is more also. So now when we look at this uni- awe inspiring sight. So the Bhagavad Gita itself uses an interesting uh, narrative framework to help uh, make sense of this sight. So if you look at this 11th chapter, verses 1 to 4 are Arjuna's re- uh, request. Can you please show me this universal form? Then Krishna describes what he will be showing. We often think that we see with our eyes. However, we don't see simply with our eyes. We see with our intelligence that makes sense of what we are going to see. So if somebody, say somebody is, uh, becomes pregnant and then they are going to see the sonograph or the x-ray or whatever, uh, uh, the, some kind of technical technical image of that now if, if the baby is well formed but if it's, uh, then we can actually discern the form of the baby but otherwise if the baby is well in the first few weeks then it might be a very small thing then our vision has to be guided can you see this can you see this can you see this okay this is the baby oh okay because at that time even the head the arms nothing might be formed so, so so when we are seeing something unusual our vision needs to be guided so that we can make sense of it so the universal form is such an awesome vision that Krishna first describes, this is what you are going to see. And Krishna gives like a intriguing, uh, we could say precursor or prelude that I'm going to show you something, what you have asked for, and I'm going to show you something more also. So we'll see what is that more uh, a little soon. But then after that, so first, there is Krishna's description of what he will show. Now we know the Bhagavad Gita is a nested conversation. The main conversation is between Krishna and Arjuna. But this conversation between Krishna and Arjuna is nested between, uh, within the conversation between Dhritarashtra and Sanjay. So then Sanjay starts describing what Krishna has revealed. And it is an interesting study which we can't get into. So that here, that what are the details that Krishna tells I'm going to show. And what are the details that Sanjay says? Uh, Sanjay says Krishna has shown. So what are the similarities in that? What are the differences in that? That's it's interesting because sometimes we, we want to show something to someone and they see that, but their attention goes to somewhere else. It all depends on everyone's interest. So, so the Sanjay's description of what Krishna has revealed. And then Arjuna is overwhelmed. He's thrilled. He offers his, uh, he starts trembling in awe. That's the verse 14. And then 15 to 30 is Arjuna's self-description of what he saw. In the 16th verse, he says, My dear Lord, I'm seeing this universal form. Pashami Vishweshwara Vishwarupa. So it's describing Krishna, you are Vishwa Ishwara. You are the Lord of the Vishwa of the universe, and you are showing me the universal form. So Pashami, I'm seeing that. Vishweshwara Vishwarupa. So after this is shown, then uh, now within that, as we see something stunning, there is an effect of that on us. So if we, if say we are, we are watching a movie, hmm, and when we are watching the movie, what we are watching is also influencing us. So sometimes some people, if they want to do a, a review of a movie or something like that, they might actually show themselves watching the movie and say, hey, this scene is good. This scene, this, this scene doesn't make sense. Now, this, this dialogue, this dialogue is great. This dialogue is 
hey it's a poor dialogue so like that they might it might be like a live response to whatever is being seen so what happens similarly there is a live response so arjuna is seeing the universal form so first he says okay i'm seeing the whole universe i'm seeing the various beings within the universe in this form and then he says in the next four verses what is the effect of that he is saying that even within the universal form that as i'm seeing this form there are other beings who are seeing this now on the battlefield nobody sees it but across the universe uh, people see that form and he says they are they are first they are adbhutam they are thrilled and then they are also bhayena they have become fearful and then it describes the effect on arjuna and this is significant arjuna is initially wonderstruck and then he becomes fearful and then arjuna is not only seeing the universe then arjuna sees the battlefield and that flummoxes him that overwhelms him so and then in the 31st verse he asks a question he asks who are you akha hi me ko bhavanu grupo who are you please tell me so we'll see this one by one what is going on over here so visualize that suppose you are starting a to see a movie and you think okay it's going to be a, it's a wonderful movie maybe it's going to a rom com or whatever or it's a romantic comedy but then you find out hey this seems to be like a action movie and not just action movie it seems to be like a horror movie and then maybe there is some strange looking fear some monster who is destroying things and everybody is terrified of that and then suddenly you start seeing that monster is come as on the tv as come in your neighborhood and is destroying the houses in your neighborhood and now coming to your house and is about to destroy your house hey what's this and then if you i don't want to see this this is too scary and then you press the remote and the remote has stopped working and then right in front of your eyes you see your, your own house is being destroyed you are sitting and you are watching okay this part is destroyed this part is destroyed what is going on so something similar happens to arjuna arjuna sees first the whole universal form which is majestic and he's thrilled by that but then everything starts coming much closer to him it becomes a far greater close up and then he sees the battlefield and he says damstra karala nichate mukhani rishtvaiv kalan al sannibhani tishon jane n labhe cha sharma prasid devesh jagan nivas so he says that i'm seeing that there is your mouth from this mouth a blazing fire is coming and in this mouth the warriors on both sides they are being devoured and what is this who are you so his question who are you is at one level strange because just at the start of a conversation the conversation of or start of his description in the 16th text he is identified pashyami vishveshwara vishwarupa i know you are the vishwarupa as behold you now and then he is saying who are you so what happened in these 15 verses that arjuna went from recognition to incomprehension to lack of recognition so to understand this now this is a universal form this is one image so what we see is you will see that arjuna is seeing it not just at one place he is seeing it in front he is seeing it behind he is seeing everywhere the universal form and he is is stunned by that form and is overwhelmed by it so so arjuna why does he get bewildered because as krishna dropped a prelude he said i am going to show you something else more something more than what you asked for so vishwarupa now when we talk about the universe the universe broadly has two aspects to it this is the space and there is time and normally we think of the universe universe in terms of space okay this is spread all over so the vishwaroop describes how god's presence and god's power spreads all across the universe the whole universe is a body of god so that is one understanding of vishwaroop and that is in fact the standard understanding however 
as I said, the other aspect within the universe is time, and how God's God's dominion, God's power and pres presence pervades across time also. That is described through the Kal Rupa. Kal means time. Rupa is form. So God as time. God as time means that history is not just a, a set of arbitrary events. History is what is happening in this world by which uh, God is manifesting his will. So the Kala Rupa is what Arjuna was shown. Some, then that, was, that had not been shown earlier. So now this brings us to the question that what, why is it so scary? So what was scary? The Vishwarupa was not scary. The Vishwarupa was awe-inspiring, was awesome. But the Kala Rupa was scary. It was fear-inducing. So Arjuna's apprehension was because he couldn't recognize the fierce form. It was devouring all we warriors. And some of the descriptions are quite unnerving. So it's described how that all the warriors are entering into the mouth of the universal form. And as they're entering into the mouth of the universal form, what's happening is the best part of the body, that is the head. The head is smashing against the teeth of the universal form. Uh, there are the teeth, the mouth is wide open and there are teeth which are there and hitting against it and the head is smashing apart. And as the head is smashing apart, the, the blood is flowing all over the, the face of the universal form. And the universal form is taking out the tongue and is licking all the blood. So, what is going on? In fact, when there was the uh, a few years ago, there was a court case again uh, in Russia where they tried to have the Bhagavad Gita banned. The, the Russian Orthodox Church, the ROC, is uh, after the fall of communism, it tried to get a strong grip on the Russian state apparatus. And they, they felt that the Hare Krishnas, they pursued them as a rapidly spreading religion. At one time, the Newsweek magazine reported that Hare Krishna was spreading the fastest among all religious groups in Russia. Mm, so, so they, they tried to get the Bhagavad Gita banned. And one of the things that they used to try to get the Bhagavad Gita banned was, they said that this is describing a cannibalistic God. That the Bhagavad Gita describes a God who eats human beings. And this, this kind of vision of God is completely antithetical to our great Russian culture. We won't worship. We can't allow such a God to be worshipped. Such a vision of God to be worshipped. So whatever. So they, of course, so it is complicated. But the point is, this can be very provocative. Now, first of all, the universal form, as I said, it's, it's not real in the sense that there's no universal form existing. It's a vision that is given. So take a vision literally is... A, uh, is uh, is disingenuous. So 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 yeah, at one level, they, uh, anybody who reads about the eleventh chapter universal form, they can become bewildered, they can become fearful, and Arjuna himself become fear became fearful. So this universal form, what was his confusion? See, when we are interacting with somebody familiar, and then we see something is unfamiliar about them, then confusion arises. Say we are we are going for a walk with a friend and somebody attacks and then, then this friend suddenly exhibits some martial skills, maybe judo, karate, jiu-jitsu, whatever. And just knocks off not just one, but several, several thugs. And then we may ask, who are you? And now, in one sense, we know who they are. Another sense, we don't know who they are. Because what has happened? We thought we knew them, but suddenly they have exhibited something, some unfamiliar feature, which, uh, what is going on? Sometimes say, we have, we are in a close relationship with someone, and then that other person does such things, speaks such things and does some such things that, 
he may say no i don't even know you now who are you so similarly what has happened for arjuna is i saw this universal form but what is this this i don't know this so that seeing the unfamiliar in the familiar raises the question what is going on over here so who are you and arjuna is asking this who are you also with a certain level of reverence akhya hime ko bhavanu krupo now in in sanskrit language there are certain nuances that are not present in english in english when we refer to another second person we usually use the word he hmm? uh, he or she depending on male or female uh, now there is no difference between whether we are referring to a person junior to us or a person who is senior or even worshipable for us hmm? so there is no respectful second person reference within the english language there is of course the royal we uh, in uh, that is often derided so the queen of england might say we are not happy with this so she is referring to herself but they use the word royal we so uh, so there is that usage but in general in english there is no difference between uh, say a or ordinary person and a very respectful venerable person uh, there is no different pronoun for addressing them but in sanskrit there is so the so the in normal address we use the the word use is twam and in respectful address the word use is bhavan so there is twam and there is bhavan bhavan is a respectful second person address so arjuna is using the word bhavan who are you so arjuna becomes apprehensive like this on seeing the universal form and now why does krishna show the kala rupa at all so we'll talk about two things first is what is this kala rupa and then why does krishna show it to arjuna at this particular point so what now is it that we are worshiping a cannibalistic god not at all krishna is the loves everyone that's why he's present in the hearts of everyone but why is the universal form so destructive first thing is destruction is a reality of the world we may have because we we may have obscured our awareness of that reality because we often live in urban places or developed places where often the distresses and the dangers and the disasters of the world are are not so easily apparent we are shielded from them you know one social critic has said is technology is the way of arranging reality rearranging reality so that we don't have to experience it so so that we don't have to experience it destruction is a gruesome reality of the world we sometimes experience it in the form of hurricanes or earthquakes or say now currently pandemics and if if the universe if the ultimate reality is truly ultimate then no reality can be outside the ultimate reality destruction is a part of the world and if we say god has nothing to do with this the destruction then okay is god really inclusive is god really uh, the ultimate reality is god the cause of all causes is god the source of everything and ultimate reality becomes incomplete if destruction is also not included in it so now what is the purpose of the destruction krishna destroys the temporary to direct our attention to the eternal the temporary is removed so that it makes way for the eternal so if the world one of the main impetuses for us to pursue transcendence is to realize the transitory nature of things in this world so in general the vision of god is that is given in the bhakti tradition in the bhagavad gita specifically is un- is literally universal it is inclusive of everything that we encounter in the universe so destruction is also included within the ambit of god so god creates and god destroys but whatever he does is beneficial ultimately for everyone now why did krishna show this universal form to arjuna 
as i mentioned arjuna had asked only for the vishwarupa to be shown so an expert teacher what uh, what they do is they answer the question of a student but at the same time if they want to teach something they teach that also so both happen so krishna is answering arjuna's question okay you want to see the vishwarupa but i want to show you something what is that that arjuna is apprehensive or rather indecisive should i fight this war or not will this war lead to bloodshed can the bloodshed be avoided maybe i shouldn't be a cause all this bloodshed so krishna is showing arjuna that the warriors who have assembled on the battle battlefield their destruction is inevitable why because they themselves have uh, acted in ways that that invites the death that sentence so many of the warriors on the battlefield are are, are grievously wrong have done great heinous things and some of them have remained silent while the heinous things have been done and others they've just uh, as per their karmic endowment they have come to the end of their life span so krishna is being shrining arjuna that don't think that if you don't fight these people will not die that that has come so is going to show arjuna the inevitable and inspire him to do the responsible so it is for you you are a warrior you are a martial guardian of society and it is your responsibility to do your part what is that part become an instrument in my hands this is 11 32 33 34 in the bhagavad gita so 32 he says in 31 arjuna asks the question and 32 uh, krishna replies that akalosmi lokakshay krut pravruddho lokan samahartum iha pravrutta rute pitvam na bhavishyan ti sarve te avisthita pramukhe dhart rashtra pratinike shuyodha so te avisthita all of them are assembled over here who all are assembled all of those who are actually meant for destruction they are meant to die and krishna before that says kalosvi when arjuna asks who are you krishna doesn't say i am the vishwarupa because that all arjuna already knows okay but what in this vishwarupa are you not able to recognize so if our friend mm, suddenly ex- ex- exhibited remarkable martial skills he may ask who are you and then and that friend says okay they have a particular name says i am a i am undercover intelligence agent or i am undercover so and so oh okay so that particular part of their identity we want to know so similarly uh, arjuna arjuna's question is answered by krishna by telling i am kal i am time and then after that their question comes up okay so why why is the kal being revealed because krishna wants that dharma be established that virtue or righteousness be established in the world and those who are obstructing that they need to be sidelined neutralized so that is what is going to happen and arjuna if you become an instrument you get the glory and there is a one word over there rute pitvam na bhavishyanti sarve so rute means even if you don't fight without you also they are going to die so a one meaning one meaning is except for you everybody is going to die but even without you are going to die rute has a second meaning that means even if you don't fight this is going to happen but if you fight you can get the credit so the kala rupa reveals how god has a god doesn't just exist as a passive presence in the universe god is an active agent in the universe and arjuna needs to become a part of god's plan become an instrument nimitta matram bhava sau vesachi arjuna you are a great warrior you are so vesachi you are ambidextrous that's wonderful but your glory is is incomplete unless you become a part of my plan become an instrument that's his purpose now in the 11th chapter things go on further which i will not go into entirely but i'll quickly overview this so after this from the 36 to 46 words arjuna offers prayers arjuna is saying i want to offer obeisances but where can i offer obeisances to you you know you are in front of me you are behind me you are everywhere where do i offer obeisances therefore he says i offer obeisances in all directions namo namaste tu sahasra krutva punasya bhuyo pi namo namaste 
I offer you obeisance hundreds of times like that. So then after that, he requests Krishna, you have shown me the universal form. Please now show me your Saumya Rupa. This is a Ugra Rupa. Ugra means this is a scary, fierce form. Now show me your gentle form. So when he requests that, gentle form refers to, of course, his two-handed form. But Krishna, he goes through a sequence. First he shows the, uh, the Vishwa Rupa, then the, along with that the Kala Rupa. And then after that, he sees a Chatur Bhuja Rupa. Chatur Bhuja refers to Bhuja is arms, Chatur is four. This is the Vishnu form. So that's what uh, Krishna is describing, Arjuna describes, I see, the, I see your form and Krishna described that. Chatur Bhuja, that is the Vishnu form. And then after that he sees his Krishna Rupa, that is the Tuja Bhuja form. So the sequence is, first Krishna, it begins with Krishna and comes back to Krishna. From Krishna to Vishwa Rupa, then to Vishwa Rupa, Kala Rupa combined, then to the Vishnu Rupa and then the Krishna Rupa, it comes back. So it goes like a cycle. That's Krishna's overall revelation. And the Bhagavad Gita describes that these various forms, they have a hierarchy within them. The Vishwa Rupa is, is in one sense the closest to us. Why is it the closest? Because it is, as I said, from the universe, we go toward transcendence. So that is often the first step in spiritual realization. So it is, of course, even the Vishwa Rupa is rare to see. But with the Vishnu Rupa is God in office as the world's manager. So it's seen, but not that often. Vishnu Rupa can also be conceptualized. It is, if you consider the world is here, God is here. And the Vishwa Rupa is closest to the world. Then Vishnu Rupa is in between. And then we have Krishna Rupa. That is God at home. So the form of Krishna is not so much connected with maintaining the world or managing the world. And it is said that this is most rarely seen. Sudurdarsham idam rupam drishtavanasiyan mama devapyasya rupasya nityam darshana kangshinaha. Krishna tells Arjuna that this form which you are seeing is extremely rare. That even the gods hanker to see it. So Krishna is telling Arjuna that you just saw this universal form and this was spectacular. But realize that what you are seeing right now is even more special. So sometimes what happens is we equate the extraordinary with the special. If something is not available very frequently, something then we say it's extraordinary then it's special. But something can be ordinary, in the ordinary sense that it's readily available, it's easily accessible, but it can still be very special. For many disciples of Srila Prabhupada, when he was there on the planet with us, they had association of his. And because it was so easily available, sometimes many of them after Prabhupada departed, they felt, oh, we took it for granted. You know, so just because something is easily available doesn't make it ordinary. So Krishna is saying that you are seeing this form, but know that this is extremely rare. Now, what does it mean by it's rare if it's easily seen? So, so actually, what does seeing the form of God mean? Whether it is the form of the taking darshan of the universal form or taking darshan of Krishna Rupa, whatever it is. So seeing is not just an act of the eyes. In general, I talked earlier about if you want to, if we really, we really see things, when there is the first and the second. There is the visual perception and the intellectual comprehension. We see some x-ray, this visual perception doesn't make sense. So in ordinary reality also, visual perception has to be combined with intellectual comprehension so that we are really seeing at that time. Now in the spiritual domain, in the devotional domain, there also has to be devotional appreciation. Then there is holistic understanding. So visual perception, intellectual comprehension, devotional appreciation. That we use our eyes, our intelligence and our heart all combined together to behold and appreciate the divine form of the Lord. This applies to the universal form. This applies to the Krishna form also. Now, what form Krishna had shown Arjuna, the Vishwa Rupa, he had shown before the battlefield to Duryodhan. Krishna had gone for peace negotiations to Kurukshetra, uh, uh, to Kurukshetra sorry, to Hastinapur. And when Duryodhana remained adamant and Duryodhana tried to arrest Krishna, 
uh, to sabotage the whole peace process and accelerate the war and to of course sideline krishna from the war by having him arrested at that time krishna exhibited the universal form and it was awesome however although durudana was temporarily out afterward he said oh krishna just showed some magic i can also show some magic what's the big deal about it so he see he saw but he didn't see because there was no intellectual comprehension and there was no devotional appreciation rather there was in his case intellectual rationalization this is simply some magic hmm. so that's why uh, even when krishna was present at that time didn't everybody see him yes say when he was traveling from one place to another place he was going by chariot so people in various villages and towns and cities saw him but did everybody appreciate him that he's god no not necessarily many of them thought that he's a he's a king some of them thought he's a great warrior some of them thought he's a he's a great philosopher he's a very diplomatic leader he's a so they perceived him in different ways not everyone saw him as god so seeing krishna seeing the universal form or the principle applies for seeing krishna also all this the eyes the head and the heart have to be combined together and for us on the devotional path what is the relevance of the universal form we we understand the hierarchy of various palms forms at the same time we use all available ways to enhance our remembrance of krishna so devotees are not primarily attracted to the universal form the devotee attraction primarily is to krishna but there are times when seeing the greatness of the universe can also stimulate trigger our appreciation of god in fact prabhupad in many ways echoes arjuna's mood arjuna sees the universal form and says then after i don't want to see this please show me your two handed form and prabhupad right in the beginning of the 11th chapter in one of his purports says that a devotee is not interested in a godless display of opulence now this is a stunning statement to make because it is god who is displaying his opulence it is krishna who is revealing his universal form and how can prabhupad say that a devotee when krishna when god is revealing his opulence prabhupad is calling that as a godless display of opulence what's going on so godless display of opulence prabhupad is using in the sense that a devotee is interested in a personal relationship with krishna and the universal form is just a raw exhibition of cosmic power and cosmic uh, presence and it's very difficult to have a personal relationship with god in that form now there are the, the universal form is meditated on by devotees but there are no eternal associates of the universal form the like sekhar simhadev is worshiped by prahlad or hanuman worships ram there are no there are no devotees who are eternally worshippers of the universal form it's very difficult to relate with the universal form at a personal level so in that sense prabhupada is saying that a devotee is interested in god's personal attributes in personal reciprocation and i'm just a raw exhibition of power and pervasiveness and presence that's not what interests a devotee so so in general like arjuna our interest is in krishna's form but because we see krishna as one localized form in one temple or in one corner of our home we might not we might mistake that diminutive seeming appearance to a diminutive reality no krishna even when he exists within the universe the universe exists within him i repeat this even when krishna exists within the universe the universe exists within him so krishna was on arjuna's chariot and the chariot is just one small uh, one chariot on a vast battlefield which is just on one part of the earth which is just one celestial one object celestial object in a universe filled with millions of celestial objects so in that sense krishna might seem to be a very small person krishna is just one being within the universe and yet the whole universe is within him also that is the inconceivable nature of krishna's form so for devotees understanding the universal form can deepen our appreciation for krishna and thus we can worship krishna with greater devotion 
That's what happens to Arjuna. Arjuna says, yes, seeing your Krishna form, sitos me, I have become peaceful now. So similarly, a devotee can appreciate God's greatness and then a devotee with a deepened appreciation of God's greatness deepens the personal relationship with God and his sweetness as is seen in the form of Krishna. Thank you. So I'll summarize what I discussed today. Uh, we talked about the universal form and broadly three things. What is the universal form? First thing, I talked about how the universal form is something which is basically a transition from the un of our consciousness consciousness from the universe to God. So we can either appreciate the universe's greatness or, or its beauty, and that way we can direct our thoughts toward God. And the universal form itself, there are two aspects to it. There's the revelation as given in the Bhagavad Gita and conceptualization as given in the Bhagavatam. Is the conceptualization real or imaginary? It's imaginary in the sense that it is a visualization using scriptural guidance, but it is real in the sense that it takes us towards the ultimate reality. So then we talk about the Bhagavad Gita's description of the universal form. And therein, Arjuna asks because for people in general, that they, he wants to make sure that they don't think that Krishna is just making bragging when he's saying, I am seeing, uh, I am so, that I am, I sustain the whole universe. It's not just this verbal exposition. Krishna wants, Arjuna wants Krishna to give a visual demonstration. And Krishna does that. And then he requests this form to be seen. And when Krishna reveals, the Bhagavad Gita uses a particular tool for to because to make sense of that sight, we don't we know not just to see with our eyes, but we need intelligence. So first Krishna describes what he's going to show, then Sanjay dis describes what Krishna is, is showing, and Arjuna describes what he's seeing. And initially seeing the universal form makes Arjuna awestruck. Uh, so it's a theophany which is revealed, uh, which is manifestation of God in through nature and then after that we move forward and then the Kala Rupa is what strikes fear so is this cannibalistic God well this is not literal but destruction and destructiveness is a reality of the universe and the ultimate reality that is included so the destruction of the temporary is meant to make way to the for the eternal and Krishna reveals the Kala Rupa to tell Arjuna that you may decide not to fight, but that doesn't mean you will be able to protect the warriors. They are destined to die, so you do your part in the unfolding of destiny. So Kala, Kala Rupa completes the God's manifestation within the universe. God is not just as an all-pervasive, passive presence within the universe, but he's an active agent shaping history. And then the Kala Rupa seeing this Arjuna offers prayers and then we discuss the hierarchy or the sequence as well as the hierarchy sequences first from Krishna Rupa to the Vishnu Rupa Kala Rupa then the Vishnu Rupa again and then the Kala Rupa Vishnu Rupa and then Kala, Krishna Rupa again and among these in the hierarchy the universal form is the nearest to us in the world and Vishnu is God in office and Krishna is God at home so to see God we need visual perception intellectual comprehension and devotional appreciation Devotees are not primarily interested in the universal form because they want a personal relationship with the Lord. But sometimes I'll, we can relate to the person with greater appreciation if we know their greatness. And that's what the understanding of the universal form can help us deepen our appreciation for Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. So did others, Arjuna got the vision to see the form, others did not. Well, yes, nobody else on the Kurukshetra war saw the war field saw it. So when it is said that others saw it, it is basically describing that how the universal form includes the, not just the universe, but also the response to that universe. 
So is it that the God saw that universal form? No, within that universal form, the sight, what is it, the impact of that, that is described over there. So it's a tool that, yes, sir, Arjuna, how are you reacting to it? See, sometimes if you're watching a movie, you know, we, uh, we, we look at other people's reactions. How are they? Are they enjoying it? Are they scared by it? What is happening? And there's our reaction also. So the reaction to the universal form is also a part of the universal vision. It's not that the gods actually got to see it, but within the universal form. Okay, let me repeat this with a little more clarity. Suppose you are watching a movie which includes reviews of the movie. That is meant to, okay, and if the reviews are very positive, then what happens? Hey, hey, it, we, are, we are eager to watch it. So like that, this is a universal form. How universe is across the universe, everything is being seen. And then within that, how the side of the universal form is affecting various beings that is also described. So it is not that any, bad, any beings on the battlefield saw it. No, Arjuna was given a special vision to see it. Now it was not a spiritual vision because the universal form itself is not spiritual. So it was a special vision, not spiritual vision. Well, we had a full class on the worship of the Devtas and their position relationship with Krishna. You can hear that class. Um, it was on 721. So, what do you mean by history in terms of Kala Rupa? Basically, the way things move about in the world, it is not just that they are randomly moving around. It is God's will that is manifesting in the world. And when things happen, there is a certain level of, even if it's happening by the individual will of people, that individual's will is incorporated within God's will. So history's movement is not outside the ambit of God. That is the point of uh, that statement that when what is going to happen on the battlefield it is not just it is not because of Duryodhana's obstinacy alone it is not because of Arjuna's decision it is a cosmic plan is there it is a divine plan that is there so that's the point the Kala Rupa demonstrates how God God oversees the movements of movements within time movements of time the movements that comprise history they are also within the ambit of God's control. Just like in space, it is not that Krishna controls everything that we do, but there are, there are limits of what we can do. And there is, there is some amount of controllership. The example that was given in the ninth chapter is that just as the wind moves within the ambit of the sky, similarly, all living beings move within the ambit of Krishna's will. So just as within the universe, we can move, maybe we can walk from here to there, we can fly from here to there. But we can't suddenly develop wings and fly. So there is some amount of free will within some amount of control. Within a larger framework of control. So similarly, with respect to what applies to physical movement, also applies to movement within time. So people have free will, but their free will also works within a particular context. Well, let's focus on questions over this class. So is it possible to see Krishna with our eyes directly? Mm -hmm. Yes, if Krishna reveals. If Krishna reveals, definitely it's possible. There are different levels of manifestation of Krishna. Sometimes Krishna is seen inside our hearts. That's also seeing, but that's with um, in the inner vision. But sometimes Krishna appears externally also. So now, is it possible in sadhaka? Well, generally, if you are seeing Krishna, that means at some one level we have become a siddha. That's how we are. Uh, that's one definition of siddha to have the perception of Krishna. So, 
if you are saying with our material eyes, can we see? It depends on what we mean by material. Yes, Krishna can appear to our eyes if he wants. And now, whether we understand what we are seeing, whether we appreciate and relish what we are seeing, that depends on whether our consciousness is spir adequately spiritualized or not. But yes, uh, it is. We see in the Damodar Ashtakam first. Um, um, Satyavat Muni is remembering the Lord and he's playing that may, may, praying that may this form always remain in my heart. And then after that, he prays that may I want to see this form with my eyes also. So please show this form. Please let me see it with, with my eyes. As Sanatana Goswami in his commentary describes that uh, perception of the Lord within one's heart as a vision. That's wonderful. At the same time, perception of the Lord with these very eyes is even more special. And he's asking for that special benediction over here. So yes, it's possible to see the Lord with eyes, but it's very rare. It's, uh, it's either due to an extremely special mercy of the Lord, or it is, of course, it's always a special mercy, but it is also that uh, uh, we, when we do that, we, it's usually because we have done a lot of sadhana and please the Lord. So I answered this question about <clears throat> so many other people have seen the form before and the Kala Rupa was not seen. The Vishwa Rupa was seen. So this is a it is a special feature that was shown to Arjuna. So the, so the Vishwa Rupa is seen many times but Vishwa Rupa plus Kala Rupa is seen for the first time. Yeah, when Vaman Dev expanded his form, can we call it a universal form? It is a form that expanded across the universe. That's not the same as a universal form. Universal form is a form that contains the universe within it. In some ways, Vaman Dev's form can be said to be um, the universal form. Well, Can a blind person see God? Mm -hmm. Well, if Krishna wills, anything is possible. Just like the Trashtra saw the Vishnu Rupa because on special request of Krishna. Now, in general, in the material world, what we Krishna doesn't normally interfere with the working of material nature. So, if somebody is deaf and they are very devoted, is it that because of their and because of their devotion, suddenly their deafness will selectively go away and they will be sorry, not deaf if they are dumb. So that means they can't chant the holy names, but they have a fervent desire to chant the holy names. Will they start chanting? Well, it's possible. It's possible um, that Krishna can do it. However, it's not usual that Krishna necessarily interferes with the normal working of nature, material nature. Um, so it's possible now whether Krishna does it or not. So when a blind person sees God, does it mean they see inside the heart or do they see it physically with their eyes, their eyes are cured? And with Dhritarashtra, he did, it is said that he did see with his eyes. That means temporarily his blindness was cured. So it can be done, but it's not necessary that it will be done. The important thing is not seeing Krishna, but directing our heart toward Krishna and becoming absorbed in him. So where do we see the difference between Vishwarupa and Kala Rupa? Well, it's not a difference. It's a feature. So I think Vishwanath Chakrabarti talks about in his commentary also that the Kala Adrushta Purvam Rishitosmi Drishtva Adrushta Purvam. What is this Adrushta that has not been seen? There is a Kala feature which has never been seen, and there is no need to go to Acharya's commentaries because Krishna himself is clearly saying Kala Kala Osmi Lokaksha Krit Pravado. So of course there is Acharya's elaboration, but if you just read the Bhagavad Gita carefully, we start understanding this point that. The Kala feature, feature specifically of the warriors 
in future going to die being shown in the present that's the vision that is given over there that vision is not given to yashoda is not seeing future events of krishna leela happening at that time she sees the universe uh, duryodhana does not see the future events of the battlefield happening of the uh, at the time when he sees the yashoda in in the hastinapur assembly so it's a, it's actually if we look at it carefully the reading of the bhagavad careful reading of the bhagavad gita itself makes it evident so thank you very much for your attention and participation about the demigods i already answered that only though that the demigods seeing krishna is a part of the universal form now whether the devatas who were observing the battlefield saw krishna or not the bhagavad gita itself doesn't describe saw krishna in universal form or not the bhagavad gita doesn't describe that so uh i can't comment on that thank you hare krishna shla prabhupada ki jai